here's the seven and a quarter gauge here, and we're gonna need a we're gonna need a oh close up of this. Here's a seven and a quarter gauge, and I'm all the way that way, and I got an eighth of an inch on this rail, so that's not gonna fall through. Not even when it goes around a turn. All right, now let's go back to this. Here we go. This is a seven and a quarter gauge, six and seven eighths back to back. It has to be that. Normally, this right here is seven and one eighth back to back. Now, there's a whole other philosophy why that is. We won't get into that. I know the reasons why, but leave it be. Okay, now I'm all the way this way. So that means that there's a possibility that I could pick the point, if you remember the point, if I pick that point right there. And I'm going to go through slow at first. Now the guardrail comes into play here. You have to have, this is quarter inch steel, you have to have that fit in there. It can't be any more than this. This one don't fit. But set quarter, quarter inch space between there and a little bit of an angle to it. And when this goes through, it picks up the side back of the wheel and it goes right on through. Now I'll bring it over a little bit further and I'm going to go faster. Let's say you're highballing along, having a ball. Goes right through. No problem. So anybody that tells me, want to tell me that you can't do this, you go see Nick Edwards and Bob Hornsby or me. Because it can be done and don't tell me it can't. I've done it. Perfect. No problem. Now you get the seven and a half gauge one. No problem. Goes right through. Right on through. Now, one further thing that I have done here, I made what's called the flange ram. There's nobody that I know of makes a makes a frog with a flange ramp in it. Well, what's a flange ramp? What's a flange ramp? Okay. Flange ramp is that when you get on the points, the, now there's, there's a, a spot in here. I'm using a piece of wood. Okay, just a piece of thin 1 16th of an inch balsa wood. And I tapered the ends a little bit. All right, and I lay it in here. It fits right in here. And the only reason why I didn't glue it is because I want to show it with and without. But when, it, when it, any, any of these go through, it starts to ride up. As it rides up and it gets to where the point is, the point, this point, is now riding on the flange rather than on the tread. They say, well, what's that prove? Well, what that proves is that tread ain't going to go bang, bang, bang. You ever, see, you ever go look at the switches? They're all flattened. They're all flattened. Now, this is a piece of paper. This is a piece of paper here, and it's very thin. And I can put that right underneath there. Make sure we get a picture of that. I already wrote it. Right underneath there. Look at that. It goes right under. So that means it's not touching. The other one, right under. Okay. Now without it, take it out, you can even hear it. Bang. Won't go. On go. All right, so that's the, that's the flange ramp, and our, our frogs are going to have a flange ramp in them. But we won't have that problem. We won't have a problem of destroying the flan destroying the points. It's very simple. It's only a sixteenth. You don't even notice it going up. You got to look at my video about about these trucks right here. I, I don't no longer sell them. I sold them. I sold the whole system to. Uh, uh, Iron Horse Supply down in Florida. You look it up on the internet, you'll find it. Um, the one thing I want to tell you is, I can pick this wheel up right here. All the other three wheels stay right on the track. See that? You show me another pair of trucks in this country that can do that. They, they come up with these stiff trucks and then they can't figure out why to derail. They got to be flexible. You know, how are you going to dance if you're not flexible? You got to be able to dance. Yeah. What was that, Gene Gene, Jean, the dancing machine? Yeah, okay. Look at that, look at that. Woohoo! Put the other one. Woohoo! Goes right up in the air. And that's because of the types of bearings that I use. 
And the third thing, and a lot of people are finally coming on the bandwagon with me, uh, Tom B, for example, the back of these wheels, and I did a whole series on that too, the back of these wheels had to be straight up, like, real quick here, on this, on this here, the back of the wheel, I've done this before, instead of this ridiculously pie cutter thing of 10 degrees, you, you make it straight, like that, so this is straight back here. Alright, not that 10 degree. That 10 degree is the worst standard ever made. Now one of the things about standards. Why? Why is it that in this country, live steam, outdoor miniature rearing, whatever you want to call it, how come do we have a wheel standard? Give the wheel standard, the wheel standard. Why do we have to have a wheel standard, which is great, but we do not anywhere in this country have a track standard. There is no track standard other than mentioning the gauge. But there's no track standard as far as the switches, the gate guard rails, the shape of the rail, the head of the rail, which is all important. And I did that on a video, I talked about that, so you got to go watch that video. Anyway, uh, okay, now, one other thing we're going to talk about real quick, it has nothing to do with with this here dual gauge stuff, but it's also important. We have we have here the rail joints. Now we're using steel rail, by the way, and our rail. You see me in there? Our rail is um, made from Core 10. Oh, what the hell is that? Well, Core 10 is a non-rusting material. It's steel. It rusts one time, and then it creates a protective coating. And Bob. Um, Dean told me it's like 3% copper in there or something that causes it not to rust any longer. They make a lot of bridges out of it. So I decided to have the rail made out of core 10 where it won't rust anymore. Okay, now, and Bob, he was painting it and he suggested that we paint the rail. And it took him four days to do 2,000 feet. Well, we got 40,000 feet. Plus, the, plus the, the paint's like $75 a gallon. All right, so anyway, here's the joiners. Here's a rail joint I'm going to come up like this. And you see the gap here. You have to use ambient. Oh, ambient. Oh, well, ambient. Yeah. Well, what's the weather? What's the temperature today? Today's 65 degrees out. 70 degrees. So there's a formula to tell you how much gap when you're laying the track, how much gap to put in that rail when you're building it. Now, 90 degrees, you want them tight against there. 40 degrees, you want an eighth of an inch gap in there because it's going to expand and contract. And there's a formula for that. And I'll, I'll uh, put that on another time. But then you have, that's a regular, that's a regular joint. And then you have right here, which is, which is a, uh, this is a bonding wire for the signals. Now, you say, well, why do you need that when you got the other thing? Well, this is why. Because when you have the rail, here's a piece of rail. And here's, um, here's some that I blackened. I ch tested them with black, and we possibly may do that. Cause I, don't, I don't like, they're stainless steel, and I don't like the look of the stainless. But uh, if you look at this closely, I'm going to see if I can get up close. And I don't know if it's, if it, is it in focus? Yes. Okay. Right in here, right in there, between where it hits the web, there's a gap there. And it's only hitting on the top and the bottom. And a lot of guys just use a piece of steel straight, and it gets stuck to the side, to the, to the web, and it causes it not to slide. You see, these slide real easy. Okay, now you're also supposed to put a grease on there. There's a special grease that du DuPont makes, and I got to get it from a friend of mine who works at the railroad, uh, find out what the, what the number is and get some. I had some, but you, you put grease on them when you, when you make them. Now, the other, one other thing we have to consider is insulated joints. Now, that's pretty straightforward insulated joint. Now, I, I can't, you know, I'm not going to make a special, if I, if I put the regular ones on there like I showed, what will happen is I have to have a special, some kind of an insulator there, so we'll deal with that on this. But anyway, there's a piece in the middle here that's the shape of the rail, and where's the contour of the rail, and that causes no way can it go together and short out. 
right? but you need these insulated joints and we'll call, cover that another time but any of that the one other thing this this is nobody's done this well Walt Disney did it what is that well that's what's called a rail brace and you say well what do you need a rail brace for well the rail brace what that is and I'm going to show this pretend like this is a point the points where the when a point comes over it's going to go it's going to go against the rail like that and so you can't put a screw here to hold it down so what they do is they put a this rail brace here now these are 3d printed they're black they're plastic but I have a piece of Teflon in there you might be able to see that white there that's Teflon and I had to build this up here because it was flipping out so and I moved the screw a little closer but they'll be made out of metal and uh, what that does is allow the rail to slide. Now most guys what they do is they take a drill, whoop, put a drill through there, drill it right to the tie. Bad news. Why? Same problem. With the tie, when everything, you know, it moves. You know, expansion, the ties go along with it. They stay like that. Now to pull the gauge in. Most of the time, when you have a derailment, most of the time, it's over a switch. And it's right, usually right at the points or at the frog. And that's because they screw the frogs down. There's no way for them to slide. They drill holes in the frogs and they screw them right down. They don't move. And they need to move. They, everything needs to move. Slide. It might, not, it, might, it might be a minuscule amount, but it does move. So you have to consider that. Now look, the thing is, if the prototype, if it worked, the prototype railroad would have done it that way. They don't. They have, they have plates on there. And I use plates, by the way. These are plates. We'll talk about plates. Where's the plastic one? Uh, we had it here, I think. It's right here. All right. Yeah. Now, you have, now, these are nice. Don't get me wrong. These are nice, but they're plastic. I'm not a big deal on plastic. These are nice. Well, I have these. We've used these before. New Jersey live steamers, Pennsylvania live steamers, other railroads we've built. They all use these plates. Not a lot of them. Not people want to spend the money. They just screw it right down to the rail. But this allows, the, allows it to slide a little bit. These are aluminum. I'm going to make them out of core 10 because we have steel rail. If you have aluminum rail, you use aluminum. Now, these things here, these are nice. Don't get me wrong. But, and they're tapered properly here. But the thing is, when you get to the switch, they're too tall. You have to have special ones. And maybe they should make special ones for the switches, but they don't. So that's one reason why I don't want to use these plastic and it's plastic on top of that. Now this is what I, this is my rail brace here and it goes, where the heck does it go? Alright, here's the rail, here's the brace, there you go. Right. And what that does I'll show you the book here. All right here, I'll open right up to the page. Okay. By the way, track work, U.S. Steel Corporation, United States Steel. It's hard to find these books, but if you get one, it tells you everything in here. It tells you everything. Uh, that's the rail braces. And I'll show you what it looks like on the track. I can find that. Oh, yeah, here it is. What year is that book from? Uh, I don't know. Also, on this side, it shows you how to make the points. How to, how to make them properly. Now, why in the world? Back in the day, okay, you had channel iron, one-inch high channel iron for the points, because they're steel. But when you have the ability to now have a beautiful steel rail, why on earth would you want to use channel iron when you can make them out of steel? So that's what I recommend. I want to tell you something else about this book. This book has so much information about switches. I have several of these books, different ones. But in the back of this book, it's got all the information for the switches here. You can see right here, I got number nine. And you just take these dimensions and you can pretty much do it right by just dividing it by eight. 
And uh, but anyhow, uh, one of the last final thing we're gonna talk about is ties, track, and stuff like that. All right, and here's a sample that I made with aluminum rail, and we have composite uh, plastic ties. And this is the way to go. They're about as much as if you buy them in quantity. They're just about as much as they are for actually wood. We used to use the womanize or CCA lumber, which actually rots anyway. And uh, you make a fixture. This is only a. This is just a portion of the fixture. Just a portion of the fixture. But you have one, you know, ten feet long. And well, I'll cover that when I get the fixture built. This is just a sample I made to show the boss how it was made. And. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about these. These are made by a company, AccuTie. I want to just tell you that those people are very, very nice, good businessmen. They're nice people, Jimmy there. They're really nice people, and I feel that there is a place for these ties. But I'm not exactly excited about it. It's my personal opinion. Uh, it's just, just an opinion. I like the, the solid stuff better. I like this better. Now, this is about... Right here is about 50 cents more than that. This has tie plates built into it. There's a lot of reasons. It's light. This is at least twice as heavy. This is very light. And you say, well, well, well what's that matter? Well, it keeps the track down on the ground where it belongs. Uh, I think there's a place for this. Small railroad around your house, this and that. Clubs, I see them using them. I'm not sure how that's going to fare out. I guess time will tell. They also made one a little bit higher. But the problem with this, I feel that this tapers too much, and you really can't get the ties that close. They're putting them out like this far apart. You know, they're putting them out like this far apart. And I, I like them, like to at least have one space in between, like I did on that sample. <clears throat> screws. We didn't do the screw thing. Here's the screw I use. I like Torx head. Drill point. It's got a drill point to it. And he said, What do you need that for? Well, going through this stuff, you don't have to drill it. Imagine drilling. I got 80,000 ties. I got 80,000 ties. You want to drill four times 80,000. How much is that? You're going to drill 250,000 holes? Duh. You just, boop, that's it. Put it in. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, here's a, here's a set that I made up with the screws. Oh, where am I that other screw? Oh, it's over here. Screw miss. Uh, I, I I found these little carriage bolts from McMaster Car, and they work great. And they look scale, and they use a nylock on this side. So when you tighten it up, you back it off a half a turn, and that's enough for the slide. So that we always use, it works. And uh, the final thing. We're going to talk about is turns, curves, whatever you want to call it. Where's the thing? Uh, curve. All right. You got a curve. Here we're going down. Choo choo. And the circle. Ooh, out back the other way. Okay, somewhere over here in the middle of nowhere is the the radius point, say 100 feet. Now, what most people do, they come down here, right there where it starts to make the turn, they're making the turn. What that does, hold on, got a running nose, I just got over a coal. What that does is, okay, you're coming down, boom! Lionel does this. If you look the way their trucks are made, they're made sloppy so they go around a turn. We have centering devices on our lead trucks. You know, I have a lead truck, it's different, but lead truck on a, on, on a Pacific and some passenger engine, two wheel lead truck, four wheel lead truck. They got swing motion devices in there. So, well, you need to do it like this. You have what's called an easement. We're going to stop there. We're going to stop there. And we're going to do this. like a parabolic curve, and then go straight. And the reason why that is, is because now 
he has this part where it ends to be straight and is easing in easement into to the radius. So this part is actually much bigger than 100 feet. And of course coming out the same thing. That's called an easement. Nobody does that. The other final thing, and I, I took this up on the, another video, super elevation. Well, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to draw it a little bit exaggerated so you can see it. Track, track, wheel set, wheel set. you got to think backwards all the time here. Axle. Axle. Okay. Well, as everybody knows, on the wheels here, there's a three-degree three degree taper wheel. Well, why do you need that? Well, the axle is solid. It's not like an automobile. An automobile, excuse me, an automobile has differential. So one wheel travels further than the other. This is a solid axle here. So they're connected together. So in order to compensate for that, they make the taper on this three, three degree on either side so that, when it, believe it or not, when the thing goes around a turn, it slides up on the, on the bigger part of the diameter, which is closer to the flange, and then the smaller part of the diameter when it's on the other side against the flange, away from the flange. And that compensates for some of the difference in the diameter of the wheels. Now, if, it, if it's not enough, what happens is you'll hear this going around a turn. Especially with steel rails, you'll hear that squeal, and that's the reason why you hear that squeal because there's no there's no super elevation in the track or not enough. So that's another thing that's very important in railroad. You say, well, what's that? And so it's important. It's very important. Well, okay. Uh, I guess I covered everything. I'm going to do this video for a while, and I hope it comes out okay. Uh, we'll see what happens. Get it edited up and get it up on on YouTube, and uh, we're you know we're starting to we're starting to build this railroad. We're getting close, and uh, it's going to be a summer railroad. But we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, but uh, this all came about because of that job. Uh, now, if you can build a seven and a half gauge out west, uh, by the way, I was in on the ground floor when they built Crane Mountain, Quinton Breen, who was the the founder, the father of, of, of Train Mountain, if you will, regardless of what he did later. I want to talk about that. But he started it, and uh, he, uh, he should have made a dual gauge like this, like I'm doing here. He should have made a dual gauge. Because then anybody in the world could come there. And some people would. They would get a container, put all their engines in a container, ship it over, go to, you know, and have a, like a, a triannual, go there, and... Uh, they could have run, but no, he wanted to make it seven and a half gauge, and he cut out all that whole people, all the English people, and let me tell you something. I look into it, and one of these days I'll get over there. Live steam over there is huge, huge, huge over there. It's a huge market. It's all seven and a quarter gauge or for, for the inch and a half, or for anything bigger. It's all seven and a quarter gauge. You, we have a two and a half inch scale locomotive over there in the shop. And that's seven and a half gauge, but it also runs on the same track, which is... Okay, well, anyway, that's it for now on this video. I was, always wanted to make this video. We got it done now. We'll get it edited up and get it up on YouTube. And uh, I appreciate all you guys. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next video.